All right, good morning, everybody. So today, I, I want to talk to you about what's going on in the world. Every year, we have almost a billion hungry humans. And each year, 2.65 million children die from malnutrition. These statistics are, cord are according to a 2021 report by the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations and by the UN Interagency Group on Child Mortality Statistics. Now, even though we have th almost 3 million ch children dying from hunger, somehow we feed 7.2 billion human bread, farmed animals, and 100 million tons of factory farmed fish. That's according to a 2021 report on global animal, animal slaughter statistics by Faunalytics. Now, those are big numbers, but let me put this in a little bit closer light. Right here in Michigan, 16% of households are food insecure. And that means that nearly one in 10 children in Michigan don't get enough food to eat. But somehow we feed 1.15 million head of cattle in the state of Michigan. And I will guarantee you that an 800 pound bovine eats a lot more than a 65 pound child. Now, who am I to be talking about this to you guys? Many of you know that I'm committed to public health and that I'm pursuing my master's degree in public health. But you may not know that I played a very important role in getting Ann Arbor to switch or encourage their people to include plant-based diets as part of their zero carbon neutrality plan. And in fact, I still uh, advise the Office of Sustainability on sustainable food purchases. Now, I had to ask myself a question in preparing this. Do you guys care about this? And I think you do. See, Josh, you talked about pollinators and the poison, but you may not have realized that 80% of the corn, soy, and wheat that's grown in the U.S. that requires those pesticides is fed to factory farm meat. And Sydney talked about the plastic in our oceans and the effect on sea turtles. She even mentioned that the fishing gear is left behind is causing some of the destruction. But what she may not have realized is that that fishing gear is from these huge ships that have these huge nets that sweep in and take everything in its path, including those turtles. And then those turtles get mashed up thrown into animal feed and put and fed to factory farm fish. And Aiden, you talked about CAFOs and the destruction that they have and talked about moving away from factory farms. But you may not have realized that 99% of the meat that we consume in the US is factory farmed meat. Now, today I wanna to share with you the latest research on sustainable and equitable diets. I want to talk about what we need to change, why we need to change it, and how we can ensure an equitable food system. And I'm going to give you a couple of small steps that you can personally take to make a difference. Now, here's the thing that bothers me. We talked about that there's people going hungry and that we're feeding these factory farm animals the food. But the thing that really bothers me is the feed to food conversion ratio. See, a group of researchers in 2016 from Tel Aviv University in Israel and the Wiseman Institute in Israel quantified in the American food system what happens when we feed the cattle and we feed the chickens and we feed the pigs, how does that convert to, to calories? And 100 calories of feed amounts to 3 to 31 calories in the form of meat, milk, and eggs. Let me make this make a little more sense to you. Each year in, in the US, we eat at least 25 billion hamburgers a year. I've even heard 50 billion. But one quarter pounder burger 
requires 13.5 pounds of feed. That's a really inefficient conversion. Here's the other thing that bothers me. You guys have been sold a lie about protein. We don't need protein as a macronutrient, protein as a, as a, uh, on our, on our plates, as far as like focusing on it and, and that type of thing. And in this 2019 paper by Dr. Christopher Gardner from Stanford Prevention and Research Center uh, on human health and the environmental needs and protein needs in the human diet, he points out, and as you can see very clearly from the graphic on the left, that animal foods, legumes, beans, etc., grains, pasta, nuts, and even kale has as much protein content and a similar amino acid profile as, as anything. And in fact, all plant foods have the nine essential amino acids and all 20 essential amino acids, or all 20 amino acids. And so eating a diverse diet is just, uh, uh, worrying about protein is just not a concern because here's how it works in our bodies. Our bodies don't care where we get those amino acids from. It can be grass and it's going to take those amino acids and break it down and your body forms the proteins. You don't need to eat protein to get protein. You need a handful of essential amino acids. Think about it. Where do you think the largest mammals on the earth get their protein, including the silverback gorilla, elephants, rhinoceroses, giraffes, by eating only plants? And where does your protein, a cow, get its protein? Now, I can't be the only one talking about sustainability, and, and certainly there is a lot of research on it. In this 20, uh, uh, 2020 paper from Dr. Christopher Benny, in conjunction with UC Davis and John Hopkins University, they looked at the global drivers in the food system, and what they realized is that consumer demand in high-income countries is the primary driver of our food system. And then in 2016, the World Resource Institute put together a paper on shifting diets for a sustainable uh, future. And they said that unless we curb the demand for animal-based products, we are not gonna reach our UN sustainability goals, including that of hunger. And they suggested that we reduce the overconsumption of calories, we reduce the overconsumption of protein by animal-based foods, and that we reduce very specifically, the consumption of beef. And in 2019, Dr. Walter Willits led the Eat Lancet Commission to transform healthy diets to meet those 2050 goals. And he states that we absolutely need to increase our consumption of fruits and vegetables, nuts and legumes, and we have to cut our consumption of red meat and sugar by 50%. And he states that a diet rich in plant-based foods also is gonna, with fewer animal sources, is also kind of going to confer both improved benefits and environmental benefits in health. So let's talk about the possible solutions. We could take a reducitarian approach and it's gonna have some impact. Doing a meatless Monday, throwing a couple of plant-based meals in a week, uh, is going to have some impact, but a imp bigger impact is going to be cutting our beef and dairy consumption because cows are incredibly destructive on the planet. Or we could go 100% and go completely vegan. Now, I got to tell you that going vegan is the best solution, but it's not easy. And I'm going to tell you that I was the king of meat. I had a barbecue restaurant in Saline two concession trailers, a huge smoker where I could smoke 12 briskets and 24 pork shoulders at a time. And I had contracts with the cities, the mayors, the schools, the local businesses, Faster Horses Festival. And I tell you what, I somewhere along the line figured out this connection of the inequities in the food system and went vegan. And if I can go vegan, a fat barbecue guy, I'll guarantee that anybody can. So what does the future look like if we don't make a change? We're gonna to continue to see toxic algae blooms in our freshwater resources. We're gonna see continued destruction of the Amazon for animal agriculture. 
we're going to continue to see the methane emissions, which are very toxic to our climate. And these little guys are going to keep going hungry. So in summary today, you know, people are hungry and you guys care. I know you do, but you got to dig deeper. Animal agriculture is the primary driver of an inequitable and unsustainable food system. And that is driven by consumer demand. That's you and me. Sustainable foods for all means plant-based diets. And I want to talk to you guys about taking one small step today. I want you to try Beyond Burgers. And I'll tell you from, from a meat guy, it's the best damn burger I've ever eaten. And today, I'm going to throw a link in the chat to a free version of Cowspiracy. And I want you to watch that. Cowspiracy can give you more information on this topic than I can do in a 10 minute time frame. And finally, take that chance with me. Watch Cowspiracy. Make the choice. By not making the choice, you're doing nothing. Make the choice to be the change for these children. Thank you.